themselves. And to this, in this case, it is the Lord. The Bible says this about commitments in Romans 6.13. Give yourselves completely to God. Back to life. And you want to be tools in the hands of God. Used for his good purposes. Give yourselves completely to God. Every part of you. So when we give ourselves, let's say I give you $20. I don't cut it in half and then I'll have the half. Right? If you give something to people, it's theirs. Right? It's not like, let, let me give you $20, but your hand is still having a hard time uh, releasing the $20. But when you give, we give everything to P or to every, every part of us. And that's not the end for, in terms of commitment to God. He said, he wants us to be tools and used for his good purposes. Now, that's the highest commitment you can make in your life. Giving everything to our God. Making him use you. For his purposes here on earth. You know that we believe that there are five purposes here at Cross Culture Church. And for our purposes for our life. They're covered in the great commandment and the great commission. You see a great commitment to the great commandment. And the great commission, commission will make a great man or woman of God. So you have to commit to what's the great commandment and what's the great commission. The great commandment says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. And the, greatest, and the great commission says, go make disciples of all nations, baptize and teach them to do everything I've commanded you. You see, friends, the purpose of, of our time here on earth is not just um, acquiring possessions. Or it's not just attaining status or achieving something, success, or experiencing happiness. Those are just secondary issues. Life is all about love. Amen? Life is all about love. But with the great commandment, it's loving God and loving people. You see, we have to love God first in order for us to love people. Right? Especially unlovable people. It's hard to love people. But with the love of God, it's not, it's not even challenging. You just go to them, share the gospel. And it's easy. You may succeed in many areas, but if you fail to learn to how to love God and love others, you have missed the reason why God created you. Let me repeat that. You may succeed in many areas, but if you fail to learn how to love God and love others, you'd have, you would have missed the reason why God created you. Now for those in the great commandment, there are five verbs or five things he wants us to do with our lives. He wants us to know Him, to love Him, to grow in Him, to serve Him, and to share Him with others. So it's not just for us. But it's also for others. In a cross culture, we call this five E's, right? For those uh, long time workers, I'm sure you know the five E's. The first one is encounter God, praise God. And then we equip, we enjoy, empower, and extend. Some others, uh, some, some people call it worship, discipleship. Uh, fellowship, ministry, and evangelism. It doesn't matter what, what words you use. The fact is that God has five purposes in our lives. And today, I want us to, I'm daring you to commit to each one of these words. Right? Because they're worthless.
He renews the power. You're not going to go, you're not going to, you're not going to get your shit renewing or renewed by watching TV, right? Or watching whatever TV or, or playing games. That's just going to make you even more tired or lazier and lazier. You see, with the Word of God, with God itself, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you get renewed. Your strength is restored. Another one, another verse, uh, John 6, 35, that Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The thing with worship, this should be a commitment, uh, an everyday commitment for all of us. Right? This is not just Sunday. Sunday is very important because this is a Sunday worship service where worship can be practiced. But I say every day, Committing yourself in worshiping the Lord is very, very crucial and very important. Because without the Lord in your everyday lives, the enemy for sure will try to conquer you. Someone said, if the Lord is not your Savior, then death will. Right? I don't want death to be my Savior. I want Jesus to be my Savior. And the only way to know that is through worshiping. Is giving ourselves to our God. What is to Him. I want, so, I want to add something to that. Since the, the, the greatest com commandment includes loving others. This way to attending Sunday services, right? So we it's 10 30. I know sometimes rain makes us more uh, more sleepy, it's hard to get up. But you know when you want to worship the Lord, you are excited to to see him and to experience him, right? And we this is a worship service. And everything that we're doing here is for us to experience the Lord more. And that's why for, for us, it is very, it is one uh, of the important things is that we attend our Sunday worship service and by committing to it. I believe that going to church is a visible and a tangible expression of our worshiping or of our worship toward God and our love for Him and for others. It is where we can publicly bear witness of our faith and trust in God. Now once you are committed to worship, once you are closer to our God, once you know who the Lord is, once you know how He can do some, some things in you and through you, the next four will not be burdensome to commit. You see, again, commitment is kind of um, hard to um, grasp, but It'll be easy if you have the Lord in you. So the first one is we must be to strengthen our faith. We must be committed in worship. The second one is to discover our identity and purpose. We have to be committed in fellowship. My friends, I believe that fellowship is a spiritual necessity, right? It's not just you know going out, eating K barbecue, going out and uh, playing games with other people. I believe this is a spiritual necessity and it's not an option. That's why we, we are daring you to commit to fellowship. Acts 2, 42 to 47 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number, daily those who were being saved. Amazing what they do before. Right? They don't just fellowship. They even... A break bread every day. They, they hear the apostles teaching every day and they commit to prayer every day. And what do you see when you do that? Signs and wonders. 
This is a promise of the Lord. Fellowship, the real fellowship in its sense, the Christian fellowship with prayer, with loving others, with loving God, always includes signs and wonders. Always the result would be signs and wonders. You want to see signs and wonders? Huh? You want to see signs and wonders? Then come into fellowship. There are two kinds of Christian fellowship. The first one is the worship, which is the vertical. And, and the other one is the horizontal. Vertical, we see in 1 John 1, 3. Our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And then the horizontal, on the other hand, is habitual sharing, constant giving to, and receiving from each other. The pattern of life for God's people. You see, Christian fellowship is more than attending church. It's more than just gathering. It is assimilating into the body of believers. Becoming one in worshiping, loving, caring, and sharing. Again, optional, I'm sorry, fellowship is not an optional matter for believers. Because First John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light, which is in Jesus, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. This is, fellowship is very critical in our um, continued survival as Christians. We need the preaching and teaching from God's word, the atmosphere of worship and praise, the encouragement which we draw from our brethren, the opportunities for Christian service, and we need the opportunity to practice love toward other believers. Now, I challenge you to get involved in faithful fellowship with the body of Christ. Here at Cross Culture, we have Bible studies for all ages. We have the 70 and up or 60 and up for uh, what which we call young at hearts. They're still, you know, even with the age, but with the wisdom, praise God, and the knowledge are still um, gathering, right? We have the adults Bible study. We have one in Wednesday. We have one in Thursdays. And we have like five or six on Fridays. So if you consider yourself as an adult, but usually it's 40 and above and married or single or single parent, we have that for you. We also have 30 to 39, which we are calling cross, which we call cross. They are in crossroads, but, you know, there's like crossing the road for Christ, something like that. <laughs> that's, that's you. But anyway, uh, crossroads. And then if you, are, if you have a son or a daughter at age of 18 to uh, 29, we have the 45 young adults ministry. And of course, we have the youth ministry, which is 12 to 18. And then below that, we have the Sunday school. What? Amen. Sunday school, right? We have a lot of, we also, if you don't, if you're not uh, available on Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we have prayer nights on Tuesdays. Prayer nights on Tuesdays, they gather, they pray for people, they pray for people's prayer requests. This is not a gossip session, but just prayer in a prayer, prayer for, for everyone. We also have uh, the newest one, which is the Spanish Bible study. So if you, are, if you have friends with Spanish speaking, uh, that is Spanish speaking, you can uh, go to the hub later and uh, write your name. We'll, we'll call you. This, uh, happens usually, uh, this happens every Thursday. Actually, all the things that I've said uh, is, is found in the bulletin. All right, so just look at that, and you can, you can fellowship with us. You see, you will even discover gift things. You will even identify, you will even identify your gift things, and so many times expose your hidden talents. Um, one, one, of, uh, one example I, I can remember is one of our worship leaders, Louis, you know, Louis, the other worship leader, he started attending prayer night. Not that his voice is so loud, okay? But some, I think we're looking for, uh, for people in the worship team that time. And then someone heard him. You know, someone just heard him. 
and uh, I guess felt some conviction or felt some uh, uh, Holy Spirit in there, so invited Louis to a Bible study. And then in Bible study, uh, he was used again to lead worship.